This is a quick review of a topping NX3 headphone amplifier and a few surprises that I found. Uh, I've been working on a DIY project of making some planar headphones. These planar headphones have a low impedance of about 32 ohms and uh, I wanted an amplifier that could drive this low impedance. Uh, a lot of uh, laptops, uh, cell phones, whatever, have uh, their output amplifier is AC coupled, meaning that there's a capacitor uh, on the output of the amplifier going to the headphone. And uh, if this uh, capacitor is not sufficient, sufficiently large, it can limit the low frequency response. Anyways, so uh, I bought one of these and hooked it up and it did surprisingly well. And uh, I hooked it up to my audio precision analyzer uh, that's right up here and it did very well in fact it was ruler flat down to uh, about 20 Hertz 10 10 to 20 Hertz and so uh, that really surprised me and uh, it's, it just measures out really really well so anyways uh, I'm gonna tear it apart really quick and I'll show you the surprises I found uh, this unit performs very well so I opened up the uh, topping headphone amplifier this is the model NX3 and I uh, had uh, a few surprises. So as I mentioned earlier, I saw a very good low frequency response. So I wanted to see how large the uh, output coupling capacitors were in this design. And uh, I saw these small capacitors here that look like they might be output coupling caps, but they're just way too small. So I looked up the uh, this chip. It said TI uh, TPS. I'm sorry, TPA 6120, and this is a pretty high quality chip. Uh, this probably cost a couple of bucks in quantities of thousands, and this is uh, designed to work from a plus and minus power supply rail, and that's what these lines are here and what these capacitors are. Uh, since this is a designed to work from a plus and a minus rel, we don't need DC blocking capacitors. So that explains the uh, very good low frequency response. The output of this uh, IC is right here, it goes through this uh, resistor to the headphone amplifier. The other channel does this out to the uh, headphones. So this uh, this surprised me. While we're right here, another thing that surprised me was this uh, use of a right angle pogo stick. This little post right here is spring loaded and is designed to come in contact with the front faceplate. And uh, regardless of how tight this faceplate is, this spring will take up the distance and make a good contact from ground to the front place, uh, front panel. These are expensive little parts, so that surprised me. So part of the surprise was good amplifier, uh, DC coupled, and how are they getting the plus and minus uh, uh, voltage rails? Uh, most cheap battery powered equipment uh, only is going to work off the uh, plus just has a single rel so i'm going to slide this over pardon the slow update rate of my camera let it catch up so what we've got here is another ti chip this is a tps 61085 this is a dc to dc switcher this is the inductor associated with this switcher. This is the input supply. This is the side that's going to be being uh, pulled down to ground. 
and uh, so here's the output it goes through this diode which is uh, so it rectifies it and then we have some decoupling caps on the back side of this board is going to be the feedback resistors this is set at six volts so how are they getting the negative six volts this is pretty clever so they're taking this uh, switching frequency, this switching energy that's right here. They're capacitively coupling this, and then they're going into a this uh, these two diodes. This is going to ground, and so this will force, since this is capacitively coupled, this will force a negative uh, rel. Uh, so they're going to get approximately a negative six volts. Now. It's actually going to be a little less. It's going to be negative six volts less the drop of this diode. And it measures about a negative 5.7 volts. So that's pretty clever. Uh, the disadvantage of this is that this negative voltage is not really regulated. Um, the plus six volts is regulated. Another surprise was the input to the amplifier is using these WEMA one microfarad film capacitors. These are uh, good caps typically. I'll go for show you what the battery is rated at here. So decent sized battery, lithium battery rated at 2.4 amp hours. I'm going to flip this over. There's another op amp in the circuit here. Uh, this might be a little hard to read, but it's a Burr Brown now TI OPA2134 op amp. This is a precision audio. I think it's in their Sound Plus series. And uh, this is probably a two to three dollar op amp in quantity of thousands. I didn't trace out the circuitry, but this is probably going to be doing the uh, base boost and the extra gain that can be switched in and out from the uh, front panel. These two little uh, SOT 23.5s are uh, the lithium uh, battery uh, maintenance uh, over voltage over current type devices. That's about it. Oh, maybe I'll turn this around and you can look at the. Uh, this information right here. And a little bit more. Anyways, uh, pretty impressed. This is actually a good looking build. So, this might be a little hard to see, but uh, the audio precision analyzer is set up to run from 10 hertz to 40 kilohertz. And I'm driving this into a resistor load here that's 47 ohms. And uh, this is the result. As you can see, this is uh, ruler flat all the way from 10 hertz up to approximately 30 kilohertz, I think is the 3 dB down point. So here we're flat to roughly. 20 kilohertz and uh, 3 dB down we're about 30 kilohertz so pretty good uh, performance I'm running the frequency sweep again now with the base boost uh, activated uh, the plots uh, almost uh, done acquiring here Almost there. Stay on target.
there we go. Okay, so we're flat. This is about one kilohertz and uh, about a 3 dB up at 113 hertz. with uh, about a maximum 5 dB gain. Uh, this is voltage gain uh, to the rest of the band here. And so it's not a massive amount of gain, but it is very noticeable. So this is the gain of the device. This is with the volume control in the maximum counter, I mean ma maximum clockwise position. I'm putting in about 100 millivolts. I'm getting about 107 millivolts out, close to 108 millivolts. And uh, if I go to dB gain, uh, not a whole lot of gain. I'm going to flip the gain switch. So here we're about 10 dB of gain. Um, I'll go back to millivolt scale. It's 100 millivolts input. We have 320 millivolts output. I'm going to go to the THD. This is total harmonic distortion. This is with the uh, again with the volume control at maximum setting. And we're measuring about uh, 0 0.005 percent, very low. So I'm going to go back to unity gain. And adjust the knob here a little bit to get this to 100 millivolts in, 100 millivolts out. close enough and I'm going to do signal to noise ratio so about 80 dB now this is just because I usually make my measurements at uh, unity gain if we put in a higher input voltage uh, our signal to noise ratio would dramatically increase but again that's uh, those are very good numbers So this is what's happening <coughs> inside the DC to DC converter. That's uh, that's the TPS sixty one zero eighty five. So they have the V input connected to the inductor, and then I just have this shown as a switch. This is the FET that's inside the uh, TPS part. This is switched on and off. It's rectified. There's a voltage divider that is the feedback to the chip, and it's set for six volts and uh, some smoothing capacitors. They pull off of before it's rectified, so this is basically an AC waveform. It's capacitively coupled into these uh, two diodes, which performs an inversion, and we get a negative 5.7 volts. Reason why it's not six volts is we're basically seeing uh, we lose the uh, voltage drop uh, of this uh, diode here. So this side is regulated. This side technically is not really regulated, but uh, should work just fine. Then this is what I was talking about earlier. A, a lot of headphone amplifiers that run off of a battery um, do not try to create a negative voltage rail and so they'll have a amplifier that's powered by a single positive rail the other side is ground and they'll have to bias the input of this amplifier to the midpoint of the voltage rail say for, if it was six volts they would bias this for three volts the output of the amplifier now is centered on three volts 
but if you had that centering of three volts going to your headphones that would burn up your speaker uh, so they have to have a capacitor in here to block the DC and uh, if this capacitor is not a large enough value or the impedance of your speaker is too low you will lose base frequencies and that's uh, found by this formula here the uh, frequency cutoff point is 1 over 2 pi RC R being the speaker C being the capacitor uh, in this topping design they've provided the plus and minus voltage rails to this amplifier so the input to the amplifier does not need to be centered uh, on midpoint between ground and a positive rail so the uh, AC waveform is rides on ground and therefore we don't need a uh, coupling capacitor anyways pretty uh, clever design so this uh, amplifier has some very nice components it has that little extra uh, pogo pin to connect to the front uh, it has looks like to be appropriate uh, lithium battery monitoring and uh, it's got some quality components and the uh, layout soldering looked all real good I'm quite pleased with this uh, amplifier well that's about it thanks